ask you folks to please take out your tickets. Tear off that small portion of that ticket stuff. We'll come around and collect those from you. Now hang on to your tickets there, folks. They are good for some discounts around town. We got the four new saloon next door here. They'll give you a discount on the first round of drinks. Just remember, like beer for the kids. <laughs> if you need John's Barbecue Restaurant down on 4th Street, I'll give you a discount. Ice Cream and Coffee Shop over on 4th Street will give you a discount. And the Good Enough Mind and Trolley Door over on 5th Street will give you a discount. Sure, will you close the door? Thank you. Now, folks, if anybody has any hearing aids in, I ask you to please turn them off. We are shooting real guns, and I do not want to damage your expensive equipment. So please turn them off if you have one. If anybody would like some hearing protection, you'll raise your hands up there and pass them out to you real quick. <laughs> Now, folks, if anybody has one of them their cellular devices, please, please take it out and turn that rigger off. You're going to use it to take any photos with. We ask that you please turn off that flash because I myself, I got a real bad tendency to shooting toward the light. All right. Now, folks, I know with the gunfire, sometimes the kids get a little bit upset. So, if they do, we ask that you please step outside, let them calm down, and then come on back in. Okay? That way we don't disturb everybody else in the show. One more set of headphones down here, please. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah. you want to come in right there, young lady? Can I video it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. If you would just please turn off that flash on your camera. Okay. Ready for a good fight. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, take it away, Lily. Let me introduce myself. My name is Miss Lily Devine, and I will be your narrator for the show. I go back to the 1800s. Who's coming with me? Yeah. I like the enthusiasm. The year's 1877, and we're in Fort Grant, Arizona. Now, there's a young man by the name of Henry Antro. Now, Henry's only about 16 or 17 years old. Some of those folks just call him the kid. He likes to frequent the George Atkins Saloon, but he's got a problem. The local blacksmith, Mr. Wendy Cahill, for whatever reason, takes it upon himself to bully the kid. So let's see how they handle their differences back in the old west. Good morning, Patty. Good morning, kid. What brings you in today? I thought I'd come into town play me some cards and try to win me some money. Money, is it? And what will you be drinking? How about that bottle of tequila right there? Tequila, huh? You're not going to cause me any grief now, are you? No grief today, Patty. Matter of fact, I'll be leaving town in a couple days. Yeah, I heard about that. I'm real sorry to see you go. You've been a breath of fresh air around here. Yeah, I hate to leave. Say, what time's that stage coming in? Around 3 o'clock tomorrow. But you've got plenty of time then. Go ahead and have a seat. Someone should be along in just a minute. Mr. Cahill, as I live and breathe, and what brings you in this fine morning? What's so fine about it? The day just started. Pour me a whiskey. Whiskey it is. Say you got any plans this morning? Why are my plans any of your concern? Just so happens the kid's been over there waiting on a game. Well, the hell you say, huh? Fighting your heart's late, B today. You know, I'll think about it. Well, try on it. Look at him sitting here like some kind of country jank. You're just gonna start right in on it. Ah, shut up. Pour me a whiskey. Wait till you speak me, B. Boy, how many times I tell you not to be sitting at my table? I said just leave me alone. I said there ain't no time you can't sit at my table. Kid, I think you better be going to ask for you, Kay. Yeah, well, shut up. Pour me a whiskey. I don't want to fight with you. Boy, well, where the hell you think you're going, huh? You want to knock this smirk off your face? Kill! Oh, I'm going to leave you alone. Get out of here, kid, go! Okay, he'll be all right. Kill! I'm not going to go get the dog! <laughs> well, I guess somebody better go get the dog. <laughs> Mr. Kale would lay there for more than 12 hours while he slowly dies in agony on the floor. Mr. Andrew would flee to New Mexico where he changed his name to William H. Bonney. But you might know him better as Billy the Kid, and you just witnessed his first shooting. So let's have a hand for our actors, folks. Woo! 
all right? No, get up the hard part. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a small patch of desert by the name of Goose Flats. The only people who have lived up here are renegade Apache Indians. But there's a prospector by the name of Ed Shefflin. Now, Ed lives up at Camp Huachuca, now modern day Fort Huachuca, and he's up here searching these parts for any gold or silver he could buy. But the cavalry kept telling him, Ed, the only thing you're gonna find out here is your own tombstone. Well, fortunately for us, Ed doesn't listen. He finds a strike one foot wide by 50 feet long. And when you stake your claim, well, you have to name it. And Ed, having a little bit of a sense of humor, well, he decides to name it. We're going to have to get a little better on that. <laughs> now, in 1881, this was one of the biggest boom towns in the Southwest. People would flock here to seek their fortunes. Permanent housing was built, hotels, supply stores. And for us adults, well, <laughs> now if you notice, Alice Street is only four blocks long. In its heyday, it was only nine. But there was over 60 liquor licenses and 16 gambling establishments. Wow. Wasn't very hard to find trouble up on Alice Street. In fact, the mayor at the time was reported as saying that Tombstone would have a man for breakfast every day. Now with all that trouble, there had to be some sort of trade-off. And the trade-off was silver. You had your hard-working types like the miners. You also had your unscrupulous characters, such as the Cowboys gang. But Tombstone also had its heroic types, like Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday. But one man you may not have heard of is Luke Short. Now, Luke was a fine dresser, a good gunman, but a hell of a gambler. In fact, it was reported that he could count cards, which in the 1880s was unheard of and not really understood. So we can only assume he was just that good. Now being that good, men would often call you a cheat. And one of those men was Charlie Storms. Now Charlie wasn't bad with a gun, but he was often drunk, which made him terrible at gambling. Now he lose a lot of money Luke night four, comes back to the Oriental, strike with his the back. The bartender that day was Bat Masterson, but today being played by Bat. Well, she gets mixed up in this little mess. So let's see how this day in history plays out, shall we? Yeah! yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Pretty good. One more, man. Oh, good morning, Luke. How are you today? Hey, you did my ground. It's a great day. Breakfast. Oh, absolutely. Say, you don't appear to be too occupied this morning. What do you say yourself to a hand or two? You know what? I don't mind if I do. Now that's just capital. Say, <laughs> I heard about that game last night. Trust me, that was no game. Did you clean them out? Oh, no doubt. In under five minutes? In one hand. They're going to have to start calling that boy one hand Charlie. He keeps playing like that. He's playing like that and they're going to call him no hand Charlie. <laughs> Storms. All right, Miss Pat. Woo, there it is. 
Well, with a face like that <coughs> and a one car draw, I'm afraid I'm out, dear. Oh, I anticipated it much. All right, Charlie. So what's it gonna be? All righty, Lou. Let's play. I'm all in. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, well, what the hell was that, Charlie? Charlie. <laughs> You know, if you draw out your stakes just a little bit, dear, you get to play more than one hand. Uh, now, that is a novel idea. Well, you know, the curiosity is going to get the better of me. So how about it, Charlie? <coughs> I'll call. Full house. Woo! It looks like I get my money back. Hold it now. Hold what? Yeah, normally that'd be a good hand. It's a great hand. It's a hell of a hand. You know, I don't disagree. But somehow, huh, it just don't beat a straight line. You get your hand off that iron, boy. You didn't take from the dead. I didn't need to. No one's that lucky. Apparently, I am. I told you he ain't lucky. He's good. He's cheating. Beth, I suggest you escort your esteemed guest out that door now. Now, Luke, that's cocked and loaded. And it doesn't work unless it's cocked and loaded. Charlie, put that gun away from me, please. It's your lucky day, Charlie. You can't come in here and call that a cheat like that. The best we're friends. I never made a friend, but you made the bet. But you made the bet, he called, and you lost, Charlie. Now you're drunk. Go on home. Have a nice day, Charlie. Now you son of a Get out of here, Charlie. <laughs> Why you gotta prod the boy that way? Oh, you know that man is no more than an annoyance. That very well may be, but you're gonna get somebody killed around here. It's not going to be me. <laughs> and I don't want it to be me either. Besides, you're not making any friends in town. Oh, sure I am. Have a look at them all. <laughs> well, they're right there on the table. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what I meant, you know it. Well, let's just forget about that man. We'll have ourselves another drink. Besides, I think it would actually behoove that young man find himself another means of entertainment. Because obviously, this is not his forte. Well, what would you suggest? Maybe he take up um, knitting or something? Might be a nice safe hobby for that man. <laughs> move! Move! <laughs> well, Beth, you sure pick the damn his friends. It appears I do. Now, folks, Luke actually did. He got four shots off that day. But two of those shots, they actually entered the very same hole in Charlie's heart. Now, that poor fella there, he was dead before he hit the floor. If you'd like to visit Charlie, we can do so. Because he's located right up here in our Boot Hill Cemetery. As far as myself, I went on to lead a very long and prosperous gambling career. So let's have a hand for the actors. <laughs> Woo! Buckskin Frank Leslie. It was reported that he killed 11 men 
In 11 months, he once even shot and killed his wife. But before that, he's tended bar at the Oriental Saloon for the owner, Bill Joyce, today being played by Millie. Now, Millie has a nasty habit of letting people down. Today is no different. You see, Frank's been up all night tending bar and dealing with the likes of Billy the Kid Claiborne, who at 22 and drunk just wouldn't take no for an answer. In fact, patrons of the bar would say Frank was unusually patient with Claiborne, considering he was notorious for hating cowards. Nobody better ever call Frank a coward. Worse, you or that pile of horse manure out back. Yeah, that's a fact. 
Do take a bath. Would you get him out of here, Frank? Did I just finish my drink? Come on, Frank, you owe me a drink. Just give me that one. Oh, I don't know you anything. Matter of fact, doing that drink, get down the road at the saloon down yonder. So I reckon you ought to go fetch it. Now get! You know what, Frank? I know you killed my friend Johnny Gringo, so give me that one. Easy, Frank! Oh, didn't I tell you you're put your hands on me again? You're gonna be sorry? What's the matter with you, huh? You heard it here? Frank, don't you go making a mess in here! Oh, well, there ain't gonna be no mess in here. Our friend Billy the Kid Claymore here was just leaving, weren't you, Billy? You know what, Frank? I don't want that drink no more. Good, because the next time I throw you out this saloon, I'm gonna turn your head into a canoe. Now get! You know, you're messing with a cowboy. I don't care who you are, I said get! You're gonna see me real soon. You're gonna see me one too many times. Now get on! Doggone fellow, look at this mess. Pour me another drink. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm gonna join him. Between that kid and all that horse troll this morning. You and all that horse crap! I'm not ready to fight! Gee whiz. Kid is just like his father. Oh, just like him. After was a fall very far from that tree. Nope. Straight to the ground and rotten to the core. Frank, you murder! Oh, you don't I got me a gun! Ha 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 ha! Maybe he'll shoot himself back. Well, I'll drink to that now. <laughs> Frank, I know you are a murderer! I didn't realize you were such a coward! He did not say coward, Frank! No, he didn't! Mm, yes, he did, and you know what? I'm sick and tired of that man. I've been dealing with him all night. It's time to settle this right here once and for all. Just leave him alone, Frank! No, I am sick and tired of this man. Frank! <laughs> uh, you have to come over here and take the injury to this here. He's hiding across the street yonder behind that there fruit cart. Oh, just sit down and leave him alone, Frank. Uh -huh. Don't you do it, Frank. Uh -huh. Frank! Hey, boy, I see you, boy. Frank! Don't you raise that rifle, Frank! What did you do? Well, I shot him square. Oh, why didn't you just leave him alone? Yeah, I'm going to go fetch the marshal. Why did I even bother coming in today? We even picked him that one outside, because that's actually how it happened. After being thrown out of the bar for the last time, Claymore runs across the street and somehow manages to get his hands on a Winchester rifle. Hides behind a fruit cart waiting for Frank to come out the main doors. Frank's too smart for that. He comes out a side door, surprising Claymore. Two shots rang out that day. Claymore misses. Frank doesn't. He shoots Claymore from over 60 feet away with a handgun. When the marshal showed up to make a record of the event, Frank is still smoking the cigarette he lit while in the saloon. He was reported to say that I could have done more, but I couldn't have done no less. Now the reason we believe Frank's the real killer Johnny Ringo? One simple source, Claymore himself. You see, it took him over an hour to die. And within that hour, he refused any form of medication <coughs> so he could tell anyone and everyone that buckskin Frank Leslie had killed his friend Johnny Ringo. So let's have a hand for our actors, folks. <laughs> now we're going to fast forward to the year 1900, after the gunfight at the OK Corral with the dead arrived the Earth's leave Arizona. Now Warren, the youngest, most arrogant of the Earth, he also leaves Arizona, but he comes back two years later and settles down in our neighboring town of Wilcox, where he lands a job on Henry Hooker's ranch as a range detective by a man named Johnny Boyette, who he torments relentlessly. Now it all comes to a head on 4th of July when Warren picks Johnny up and throws him into a tree, totally humiliating Johnny. Well, of course, a fight breaks out, but it's very quickly broken up. And they would meet once again two nights later at 1 a.m. in the Brown Hotel. And folks, this is one of the very best examples why you never bring a knife to a gunfight. To a gunfight. <laughs> Hold up, watch out! What the heck is that? I just got him by down. I heard he bites. That's new. How about a drink? What brings you in so early? It just won't cool off I think. Yeah, I know what you mean. The days I don't mind. It's the nights. I just can't sleep. That's why I figured I'd come back here, have a couple of these, and my health attack just way too hot. 
about to get a lot hotter, Johnny. What do you mean? Look. So when did you start serving cowards in here? Of all the people. So how you doing there, Johnny? You just stay over there and mind your own business. You know what, the big boy? You are my business. Every day you seem to make it that way. Nah, uh, well, I heard about that little rumor in town. What rumor? $150 at the gun beat down. Is that a fact? That's a fact. You know, I'm going to turn it on the Cubs. Half this town wants you dead anyway, so just leave me be. Look at him walking away like a coward. You just stay over there. I'll stand here, girl. Ah! Johnny, finish your drink. What will you be having, Warren? Well, my drink should already be here. Oh, forget it. Look at manners and all. What's that supposed to mean? Let me ask you something. What kind of a man throws another man into a tree? Yeah, I heard about that. The whole town has. Yeah, I did that. And I guess that makes you some kind of man. Big man or... Nah, makes me a funny man. Funny man? Yeah. And so does that. Johnny doesn't burn. Johnny, you are right. <laughs> what is wrong with you? I'll give you a burn. Uh, go away, I'm done with you. When I say this, I'm speaking for this whole town. Retarded, you're bragging, you're bullying, take your clan and leave. Yeah! Yeah, why don't you say that again, huh? I'm doing nothing but a big bag of wind living off the brother's reputation. Go get a gun, get out of here! I'll get me a gun. Why did you do that? Oh, why's it in your business? Because this is my bar. And you know what? You're going to pay for that shot. Get through in his face. Really? Really. You know what? Why don't you clean that up for what you good for anyways? Wouldn't you expect that he was from scum like you? Oh, you know when my brother Wyatt gets back. Oh, your brother Wyatt. You want to know something about your brother Wyatt? If it wasn't for him, you'd have no respect in this town. I get all the respect I deserve. I'll blow up. I'll piss up a rope. Warren, <laughs> you want the ball to drop? Well, here it comes. Oh, the coward returns. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> no. I said turn around. Oh, so you're going to shoot me in the back like a coward you are, huh? I asked you to turn around. There's a lot more than you would have done. Now, hang on, Johnny. Look here. Let's talk about this. I'm on the hill. I don't believe you. Put that gun down Stay there. Stay back, Warren. Shut him down. Put that gun down. Get out of here, Johnny. Well, how's that respect working out for you now there, Warren? Now, Warren would lay there for more than six hours before anybody bothered to even turn him over. <laughs> People would actually step over him to get a drink at the bar. Here's you, Warren. Burn in hell. After they finally did turn him over, they found a half open pocket knife in his hand. Well, that's what he was digging for. Johnny, who was charged with the murder, was then exonerated on account of self-defense. The Earth never saw revenge against him. Now, Warren is, in fact, the only earth we have buried right here in Arizona. If you'd like to visit him, well, you can do so, because he's buried over at Pioneer Cemetery up in Wilcox. So let's have a final hand for our actors, folks. All right. Thank you, folks. Everybody enjoy the show. Yeah. Woo! All right, all right. Folks, if I can at this time, I'd like to introduce our actors right up here to you. We've got the beautiful Miss Lily Milvine. We've got the one and the only Yosemite Sam. And they call me Big Hoss. Woo! Now, folks, we're actually going to have Lily at the door over there with a spit tune to make sure you tip jar on your way out. If you enjoyed the show, you can please drop something nice in there for us, folks, because we actually do work mostly for tips. If you have any comments and suggestions, Feel free to take out that hundred dollar bill. Write it on the back of that, toss it right off in there, and we'll get on it. If you'd like to take photos with us, please come up on set and do so. If you have hearing protection, please leave those in your seats, and we'll collect those in a minute. And folks, if you like, jump on there and give us a good word there. We always appreciate that. But other than that, adios and have a great day. Thank you. <laughs>